Hi, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to just take a moment to thank all the interpreters that have been on the Hashi Talks. I think you're you know, doing a great job and it's good to see. Um, I think that we should see more of it at the conferences. So um, please chuck some emojis in the YouTube channel for them. Today, we'll, this will be a cultural track, track, so it won't be focusing on code. It'll be, you know, when we, as we can see, there's so much stuff to learn and it becomes really overwhelming. You know, I remember the first time that I went to conferences as well, I would focus in on one thing and just try and really learn that. So what I'm going to do today is just raise awareness of how we can build DevOps Dojo to help you know accelerate learning within organizations. So I'm going to focus on what a DevOps Dojo is. For the first time, a lot of people probably don't know what that is. Um, so I'm going to go over what are DevOps Dojos, the outcomes of a Dojo, and you know show some companies that are using them as well. And then go over the Dojo roles. So from master, coaches, apprentice, and participants. And then share our experiences in, in building these dojos and running them successfully, because there's a lot of organizational challenges that we have with a dojo, and, and just show what did work, what didn't work. And especially, a lot of people were working from home in the last couple of years. Generally, a dojo was more physical, so just how we sort of had to adapt from you know the the traditional ways of, of running dojos. So um, for those that don't know, my name's Brad McCoy. So I'm a CNCF and CD Foundation ambassador. So I'm quite uh, involved in the open source community. Um, and yeah, the first thing is, what is a DevOps dojo? We've heard this buzzword for the last couple of years, but there's not too many talks on it. You know, a lot of people talking about code. So a DevOps Dojo is, you know, some people think of something like Cobra Kai. So it, it actually derives from Japan. It's a, a Japanese word for a, a hall or a space for immersive learning. So immersive learning is really the key to it. It traditionally was used in the field of martial arts. So where folks would come and then you know study karate and and just practice every day so it's increasingly being applied in modern software engine engineering organizations so the starting the the real thing is it's trying to break down silos in, in businesses so from you know if we look at devops you know a lot of people think that devops is just a tool that you can buy or if you get one engineer and you can have devops but it really has to come from the whole organization. So what I really like about DevOps Dojos is it will bring everyone together for collaboration, you know, and and going through that transformation as a com company together. So when we talk about immersive, um, it's an experimental style of engaging the team and at many levels as possible. So a lot of people learn differently. You know, some like to do it practically, some like visually, some like verbally. Um, so these are sort of the, the definition and the components of an immersive environment. And yeah, the best learning and growth happen when people apply new skills to the product backlog and are able to break past existing organize, organizational constraints. So think of like pretty much every single company I've been in has you know i guess i wouldn't call them issues but they have yeah constraints about how they can deliver software faster and in my experience a lot of it has been political so um i've had a lot of political problems where there's certain people that want to own devops and you know um by having these dojos it, it sort of brings accountability and sort of governance and ownership to like the whole business as a, as a whole. So in software engineering, they help improve development, automation, QA, delivery, lean and agile. So it has a strong emphasis on agile. 
so so generally it, it's agile and then software engineering so generally when we do them when we first you know start implementing them into businesses we'll have focus on a small task to do and then we would bring people in from different teams and that really helps like improve collaboration and trust and transparency so it's about breaking down all of those silos so when i say silos i'm saying the development team might be fully siloed from the cloud team so they're all working on different initiatives so the idea is that you this is a good thing for domain driven design as well so you can't just read a book on domain driven design and just say i'm going to do that tomorrow so this is actually a good way of experimenting with it to see how mature you actually are to adopt that so yeah it's it's good to just focus on a small task and then get different folks from different teams in together and and learn together so so one of the first dojo that i did was on kubernetes so we wanted to upskill the whole business in kubernetes and that you know takes quite a while that probably takes you know a good half year to a year to actually do that so we started implementing dojos generally dojos traditionally have been you know for three days straight or they're, they're generally like for a whole day but what we found is you know a lot of people for some reason love meetings these days so we found that just breaking them down into smaller chunks like maybe two hour sessions was more effective and then we had a better participation rate as well so yeah they, they provide continuous learning by experimentation so they're also known as innovation labs so you, you can really just step out of what you're working on at the moment and and focus on innovation so the outcomes of a dojo there's so many outcomes so you know for one you upskill your staff and i've put engineers through certifications as well um kubernetes uh, terraform we're doing vault at the moment as well so we're actually running a new do dojo for vault and when you upskill staff you, you you keep them satisfied in the job so you're not worrying too much about company objectives but you're, you're keeping them happy by you know upskilling them and, and that makes them want to actually deliver more business value as well so it also evolves your culture a lot so i've sort of yeah when i've been doing them i've met so many other people in the business and, and generally if you have scrum masters product owners it really lets the business you know work together to understand each other so the engineers will get a better understanding of what the product owners actually want in a product and that will actually help them to to deliver that product the way that it's meant to be not just you know coding and thinking that that's the requirement that we have so yeah and it implements better processes as well so some other companies i've been in they struggle with um, agile so they think they're doing agile but they're actually not as good as they think they are they, they might have been in that business for five years or more and and just think they know what it, agile is so it gives you an excuse to sort of experiment with agile without annoying you know, bothering them you know saying this is wrong let's do it my way but it allows you to actually come in and say well let's try this way and see how it works and generally you know it, it works better and then you can sort of it, it's a way of transforming the business because when you're disrupting a business with devops it, it's actually a hard task a, a lot of the times i go to a new company i'm like oh no i have to do this all over again but what a, a devops dojo does is it protects me from all of that you know um, you have to be very direct when you're implementing devops so it sort of protects me from that from without upsetting people and it's sort of rolling in a process to the business that everyone agrees on so it is really good if it comes down from the exco so one of the key things is to get support from them so get them to pay for certifications you know get get them involved as well like even bring them to the dojo and that will you know um, make it very successful and if they don't agree then you can go and start your own little dojo with your friends in the company and then just gain influence and then one way or another they'll have to sort of see the value in it 
And yeah, they also do some common DevOps metrics, you know, like um, what we've seen by implementing a dojo six months after is we've, you know, we've really um, had value from the from these DevOps metrics. So, you know, our lead time, our deploy frequency has changed. And, and we're just seeing, it's sort of the invisible things that you see in the business that you don't you don't really measure, but we're actually seeing a big change in things that matter. So we're not doing you know monthly releases; we're sort of releasing on demand. Um, our lead time is much faster, and we're overall getting just a better product. So I'll talk a little bit about who's using Dojos as well. So these are some of the sort of ones that have started off. So you can see, you know, these big companies, imagine how much process and politics they have in them. So, yeah, it's really interesting to see that how they've used them and they've actually transformed very fast as well from being a more traditional old school company to a modern um, innovative company. So if anyone, wants to see a little bit more, there's um, dojo.target.com. That's a really good one. They share their journey. So I guess this talk is more to make you aware of what a dojo is, but if you want to drill down more into it, then you can check out what Target have done. There's also a dojo consortium that I will share soon that gives you run books. So you don't have to reinvent the world or try and make this new dojo. It will give you um, sort of best practices and run books for making your own. So all the hard work's done. You just have to sort of, and, and you can adapt that to how you want it. So this is the dojoconsortium.org. Um, they have, you know, they're, they're really focusing. This is actually inspired by a talk that I went to the Enterprise DevOps Summit in Vegas a few years ago. And I attended that talk on Dojo and it actually, um, I, I actually really liked it. And then that's what I've been doing for the last few years when I go to a new company and it's very successful. So yeah, and in, in a Dojo there's roles. So you can have master, coaches, apprentice and participants. So pretty much the master is an expert in both agile and software engineering. They, they would be someone that, you know, um, lives, breathe DevOps and agile, you know, has strict agile and, and they play a major role to help the coaches. So in the past, the coaches, I've generally had one coach as an agile coach and then one, one would be a tech lead for engineering. And then obviously the agile or the product owners would then go help people adopt the new processes that we're making for agile. And just really brings collaboration so that both sides of the fence understand each other. And then apprentices are really cool as well. So, you know, the whole, the whole point of this is mentoring. So we actually want to mentor people through this, this dojo as well. Like not only technically in an agile, but we want them to learn the, the processes of dojo as well. And then obviously there's participants. So they can be anyone really from architects, engineers, product owners, scrum masters, the CEO, um, anyone really that, that the, the more the merrier because it's going to, it's going to really help the business to, to work as one unit instead of all different departments that don't really talk to each other. And then, yeah, I just want to share some of our experiences. So we did. This, yeah, I've done this a few times, but the last one was in Terraform. So what we actually did was the, I was hitting the cloud team and we used Terraform open source to, we came up with a, a bit of a framework around that for best practices. So, um, practices around, you know, storing your state in a secure way, encrypted, et cetera, in the cloud and then we had templates for when new teams want to onboard a service. So being, you know, using domain driven design that comes with a lot of challenges as well. So what this helped us do was really, you know, it, it gave us a lot of governance around cloud because we didn't want the engineers to just go do whatever they want in the cloud. We wanted to put some rules. So 
We use um, things like OPA, TFSEC, which has been some talks on already today. And, and we made that framework and then we would run the dojos to, to pick an actual um, feature that needs to be done, getting the teams together and then and then writing infrastructure as code together. So not only did we upskill the cloud team, um, all of the cloud team got their Terraform certificate. We also started, once we did the cloud team, we would then roll that out through the business and, and picking a team. So we chose one small team to start with, and then we slowly went to the harder teams as well. So it, it was a really good experience. And um, I feel like, you know, to say that you want to implement infrastructure as code in a business, you know, a lot of people say it, but they don't really, they're not too successful because they, they have sort of traditional approaches where they'll just keep having meetings, meetings, meetings about meetings. And what the, the dojo did was it actually, it, it put some action into it. So we, we would put that, use the agile process around it. We would um, get the business stakeholders involved as well as engineers and, and then come together as one. So um, that, that's my experiences. And if anyone has any questions as well, um, pl please let us know. I'm more than happy to help you to get started if you want to try one out as well. And yeah, just a bit of advice on it. So you can start small to, to gain influence. Uh, and then that will, because when you say DevOps Dojo, people will be like, wow, what's that? Like, we don't need that. But it, it's all about having those regular meetings and. Or, or, or dojo, sorry, and then and then just starting them. It's all about having fun, like doing innovation. So um, yeah, and then and then sort of bring that into your one-on-one -on -one for your manager as well, and, and sort of hold people accountable to actually going to them and making them successful. Because some people we found that if they were quite busy, they just wouldn't turn up. So it's good to sort of have some sort of talk with your your, your reports and say, yeah, you need to come to this, please. And then obviously, like anything, complete the journey as a team. You should lead by example as well. So for example, any of the certs that I ask my team to do, I will do them as well. Generally, I do them before so that it sort of pushes them a little bit to to want to get theirs as well. And then get executive buy-in. That's very important. Um, and then, yeah, get your company to pay for the training. That that's That's very, very important because it's hard to get people over the line for, you know, they can train to be ready for the cert, but sometimes certs can be expensive. So that becomes a blocker if the company doesn't pay, because then how can you complete it as a team if they don't pay? Because, you know, one person can just say, I'm not paying this too much. And then definitely reach out to the community for help. So in the past, AWS has gave me access to burner accounts that I can use for the dojo. Um, we run a Sydney HashiCorp user group and they've been very supportive as well for what we're doing. So um, just reach out to the community, like the communities are getting so strong these days that, you know, that will help you a lot. And, and then just sit, you know, set up discussions with some of the, the coach, the participants and just see how it's going for feedback, almost like that retrospective. So, um, yeah, I just want to thank you for coming and, and hopefully that was something a little bit different to the tech talks um, that you could, yeah, get something out of as well. So thank you.